online and on DAB Digital Radio. This is Solar Radio, your classic and 21st century soul station. Solar Radio. Classic and 21st century soul. This is Solar Radio. The Mike Parlett Show on Solar Radio.
Indeed, it is the Mike Parlett Radio Show. We are here for you. And uh, today, we are very, very honoured indeed, as advertised and as promised, to have the man himself on the line, uh, all the way from... All the way uh, from... <laughs> here we are, with Mr. Dr. Lonnie Liston-Smith. He is here. Thank you so much for joining us, Lonnie, and uh, coming on the show today. It's great to have your company. Yeah, oh, yeah, all right, Mike, yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's great. We'll see what happens. Yes, sir, uh, we're going to take you on a journey. Uh, Lonnie Lister-Smith is my special guest on the programme today. Thank you uh, for joining us. Uh, how's it going over there, Lonnie? Huh? How are you doing over there? How's everything going over there for oh, you? Oh, yeah, well, you know, right now, I guess everything is worldwide, music-wise, is kind of shutting down, I guess because of the pandemic and... Uh, so, you know, so I just kind of just take it, taking it easy, and when I go out, make sure I put a mask on and gloves, and uh, and just been doing a lot of reflecting, you know, things that, you know, I guess I've been doing a lot of reflecting on, on, mm-hmm. my, whole, on my whole past career. You've been reflecting your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to right, have you. Right. Yeah, indeed, and that and that's a great thing. It's great to have you here, Lonnie. And of course, are you, are you still over? You're obviously you're over in uh, Richmond, Virginia, uh, at the moment, and uh, that's of course is where you were born. Uh, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about. It. We're going to take you on a journey, Lonnie Liston Smith's journey here, uh, and it spans over decades uh, that you've been in the music industry. Uh, so many different people you've worked with over the years, uh, and you know you started out really. Uh, you, with you kind of like with in the church and, and kind of from your dad's gospel uh influences from the group the harmonizing four and you remembered some such groups as uh, the swan silver tones and the soul stirrers featuring a young sam cook tell us a little bit about, about, about that and how that actually influenced you and you know your journey into the music that you're into now oh yeah that was that was interesting because my whole family was in music and like, like you said, my father was harmonizing for a gospel group. And they used to have gospel festivals every year in different cities. So the harmonizing four were, used to be in Richmond, Virginia. And they had their demars. And, and all the groups would come down. And then, then they would go to another city at, at another time. But I would meet all the groups. A lot of them would just come by their house because, uh, you know, my mother cooked for them. Oh, yeah. And but I met Sam Cook when he was the Soul Stirrers. Met the original Brian Boys way back then. And, and a lot of people don't realize my father used to always tell me about, you know, the Womack brothers, uh, Bobby Womack, all of them. They, they were a gospel group uh, in the beginning. And so um, people, uh, I guess people just don't realize, man, the church played a lot, and gospel music played a lot uh, in. Um, in our music, most everybody came out came out of the church. I mean, even John Coltrane, his parents, his grandfather. I mean, so the, the church has a great influence, you know, on the music. 
I want to play a track uh, which you you wrote uh, kind of in, more in that vein, but I want to come in, maybe talk to you about some of your you know your, your spiritual things that that uh, that played a big part of your music and and so forth. With, there's so much to cover, but I want to actually go to a song which you wrote called "A Song for the Children." Tell us about this one. This was a huge hit for you. Oh yeah, actually, uh, you know I, I met Marcus Miller. That's right. I, I discovered him when he, he was about 18 or 19. And, you know, of course, you know, he's a superstar now. Yeah. And But when I first heard him, he said, he, you know, he wrote a lot of songs for me. But he, he wrote songs for the children. And um, so, I mean, that was it. I mean, he understood exactly what I, you know, what I wanted. And just like he wrote a big hit for Miles Davis later on in life. And we're so, going uh, to talk to you about your, your work with Miles Davis as well. But let's play this song for the children. My very special guest uh, in the house or actually over in Virginia right now uh, is <laughs> the incredible, iconic legend himself, Mr. Lonnie Liston-Smith. We're so excited. Stay tuned.
My special guest on the programme today is the legendary Mr. Lonnie Liston-Smith. Uh, great to have you on the programme, Lonnie. OK, mate. Oh, I can hear you real clear now. That's great. Uh, and actually, uh, if we're very lucky, we're going to try uh, some little bit of technology here uh, and see uh, if we can get uh, the lovely Gail Johnson on the line as well. I think she might be there. So, uh, say hello, Gail. We're keeping it very funky today. Uh, my special guest as well uh, is Gail Johnson. Gail, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Mike. Jesus. How are you? Oh, very well. How are you? Say hello. Hey. To, say hello to Dr. Lonnie. Hey, Lonnie Liston Smith, my friend. friend. <laughs> How you doing? All right, all right. <laughs> I'm wonderful. I'm so glad that you're on the show. This is great. Yeah, she's here. All right, this is great. And, and, and we can see her, because uh, Lonnie's on the phone at the moment, but uh, oh, okay. uh, but we can actually see you, Gail, and I like that. Yeah. Too. She's wearing this rather rather nice-looking red uh, top, which is very nice indeed for, for the cameras. <laughs> <laughs> it matches your red pillows over there. <laughs> uh, I, I know Gail. I mean, actually, Gail was the one that connected us, uh, Lonnie, and it's it's a uh, big thanks to her for bringing you on the on the show today. And uh, we're very very happy that you're here with us. Uh, we were talking. Oh, oh. To- we were talking to Lonnie about his career. Uh, I mean, basically, the career, it, it, it started around 1963. Uh, and, you know, you guys ah. kind of grew up together, you know, with Gary Bartz. You were playing with Gary Bartz. And, of course, uh, you, like you said earlier on, you actually discovered Marcus Miller and then went on to record a whole bunch of uh, great uh, tracks with him. Uh, and we're going to come back and talk a little bit about that cause, because some of the, the, the big hits that you had were uh, recorded with Marcus Miller. Uh, Gail, would you, do you want to oh, say okay. anything? anything to Lonnie oh Lonnie I just love you you know you've been a, uh, you know I've been a fan of yours for many many years and uh, I don't know if you remember but I, I wrote a tune and I called it Gail's Groove and it was dedicated to you and oh, uh, yeah. I, you know I just you know I, I just put your I thought I captured some of your vibe some of your Garden of Peace vibe <laughs> all right that's yes. all right that, that, that. yeah yeah, sure. I, you know, I, I, and I hope you, I, you know, I hope you have much success with your, with your, with your new release. So that's that's. I mean, you're on your way. Yeah, she yeah, said yeah. That's coming out October 30th. So I'm really excited about that. Now we're going to take you back, Lonnie, to uh, when you actually joined the uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Now, not many people know. Everybody knows Lonnie. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. Everyone knows Lonnie from uh, back in you know from when he was kind of gone into this more smooth jazz and fusion kind of vibe with uh, Space Princess and expansions and the big massive hits he had in the 70s. But we're going to go way back and we're going to talk about you know you working with Miles Davis, uh, of course, Rashan, Roland Kirk, uh, and a, a number of great iconic jazz musicians from back in the day. Uh, tell us what it was like working with Art Blakey and how you got to work with him. Oh, Mike, that, that was a good experience because Art Blakey, you know, he, all he did was play drums, so he didn't write any music or anything. So all the musicians had to, uh, you know, write, write the songs and bring them in, and we'd have rehearsals. And the amazing thing was that we get together, all the, you know, the musicians, and Art would never come to rehearsal, so we would <laughs> get, get all the songs together. And then when we had everything together, we called Art, and it was amazing. He'd walk in and listen, and he'd sit down and just play as if, you know, he knew the songs better than we did. So it's, uh, <laughs> he, he, he was very unique. And But That's see, all back amazing. then, all I played was grand piano. You know, straight ahead jazz. So, without Blakely, then Max Roach, and then Rosson Roland Kirk, and uh, and then, but you know, with Gato, that was all straight ahead, all all the grand piano. So, uh, and you know, then after after Miles, that's when I yeah. We're, we're going to take you back to we're going to take you back to 1972, uh, where you recorded on uh, one of Miles's iconic albums, "On the Corner." 
uh, re- released in 72. And uh, we want you to tell us the story about how you actually discovered the Fender Rose. Uh, because before you were just, oh, yeah. just playing piano. Now, uh, he has a great story. Uh, and he just found this. Everyone was bringing all their gear to the studios. And then, uh, but of course, uh, Lonnie didn't have to because he's a piano player. All he's got to do is bring his two long arms. Uh, and, <laughs> and, 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 and he came to the, he came to this, to the studio. I'll let you tell the story, Lonnie, how you found uh, your, your, your voice on the Fender Rose. Let's hear about that. Yeah, well, what happened was, uh, was with Charles Saunders. We were doing a record in uh, California called uh, Simbi. And so, like, like, like you said, I got to the studio, and, you know, Sufi Mike B was unpacking his bass, Farrell, un- Farrell Saunders unpacking his horn, drummer setting up the drums. So, you know, of course, with a grand piano, I just, just waiting for everybody, you know, to do what they have to do. And I saw this instrument sitting in the corner. So I walked over, and I asked the engineer, I said, well, what is that? He said, that's a Fender Rose, you know, piano. I said, oh, okay, like the piano. I never, I never played one, so I sit down and, and start uh, playing. And then he had little knobs, and, and I said, <laughs> oh, okay. And, and the creator gave me, gave me this song. It was, we were sitting there, and... And Farrell and everybody ran over. The engineer said, man, what are you doing? I said, I'm writing this song. And he said, oh, man, we got to record that. That is beautiful. And he said, well, yeah. what do you want to call it? And I said, well, and at that time, I was, I was studying astral projection. And it seemed like we were floating through space. And I said, let's call it astral traveling. And Mike, when I analyzed it afterwards, astral traveling is a 12-bar uh, I call it a 12 bar, it's a 12 bar blues, but I call it a 12 bar 21st century blues. And, uh, um, it, it's a 12 bar blues, but, but I'm using different voices. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a 12 bar blues. That's beautiful. And, and, I, I, and, I, and, I, and I believe the song was called, uh, let's call it Astral Traveling. Uh, That's it. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to see if we can, we can find that. Here it is. This is. It, fa- it's fa- on the record, Timby. Yeah. This is Pharaoh Sanders uh, featuring uh, a composition from our group special guest today, uh, the legendary, iconic, one of the people that really developed the, the style. Uh, and here it is my very great pleasure to have on my program today the amazing Mr. Lonnie Liston Smith. And this is Astral Traveling.
The album is called Thembi, and of course, it is uh, the uh, great uh, Roland Kirk uh, featuring uh, the music of my special guest today, Lonnie Lister Smith. And uh, great to have you on the program, Lonnie. Uh, we're going to go back and talk a little bit about your experience and, and your work with uh, Miles Davis. Uh, and we're going to get the inside yeah. scoop on that. Uh, so maybe you could t t talk to us about, you know, some, some of the music that he was doing at the time and maybe share some of your experiences with him, working with him and, of course, uh, Herbie Hancock uh, and, and many other great musicians at the time uh, back in the 70s. Tell us about uh, the making of On the Corner, the, uh, the Miles Davis album, and what it was like for that one. Well, yeah, Mike, that was very interesting because I just discovered, you know, the Fender Rose piano, so so I get the call, you come down, because, you know, Miles always knew younger musicians. So I came down, and uh, so I see three keyboards, and and I see Herbie and another keyboard player. So I assumed that I was supposed to take wait my turn, and I didn't realize that, you know, Miles was experimenting, so all three of us were supposed to play together and I I never played with another keyboard player so so I was, I'm sitting I'm standing in the corner Miles walk over yeah. there what what the bleep you waiting for I said oh okay <laughs> so I walked over and I, you know I started playing but you know but this is different I gotta listen and you gotta get I don't want to get in Herbie's way I don't want to get in the other keyboard way so it was right. interesting so uh, you know and Miles he was he might have fit our player a uh, kunga player and a tabla player, all of us playing, and so you know he was he was in a different direction, searching, and so but it all it all worked, and then we went on tour, and um, the thing I loved about Miles, he, he was I never met anybody that that candid, that strong, and that honest. He was like that on stage and off stage, and he'd get <laughs> mad if you didn't create every night. Yeah. So, you know, most most people want you to play almost like the same thing, but Miles, he get upset. He want to hear something different, something creative, and yeah. so I, that's why most of the musicians that left his band, you automatically formed your own band because you uh, he made yeah. you strong and everything. So, and that's what happened. Mm -hmm. It was a revolving door uh, for musicians. I mean, like so many great musicians that we listen to and, and that we revere and, uh, and, and enjoy today came out of working with Miles Davis. And of course, so you were one of them. Uh, I want to play uh, a track from the album On The Corner, which was released in 1972. And you're actually on this uh, album as well. So we're going to play the title track. It's called On The Corner. And then it goes to New York girl and and thinking of one thing doing another as so a check it out uh, we, we'll play a little what? bit of this it's a 19 minute song so we're not going to play all of it but uh, we'll certainly uh, give you a, oh, yeah. give you a little taste of check it out <laughs> 19 minutes <laughs> Miles Davis on the corner right here on the Mike Parlett radio show. My special guest on the program today is Lonnie Liston Smith. We are so excited. <laughs>
for classic and 21st century soul. Solar. Solar. Yes, indeed. It is uh, the Mike Parlett Radio Show. Uh, my special guest today is Gail Johnson as well, is on the programme today. How are you doing, Gail? Are you all right? I'm good. Doing? I'm good. How are you doing? We're Southern doing California right. is sunny today. <laughs> it is a bit sunnier today. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, now, we, we're going to move on from there. Uh, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, I love listening to that, that stuff. Very experimental music that Miles is into. Yeah. And, and if, you right. haven't, if you haven't seen the documentary, there's a great documentary on Netflix about Miles Davis. Uh, and I, I don't know if uh, you, you, uh, you may have been, even been mentioned in that uh, documentary, Lonnie, uh, the Miles Davis documentary. Oh, yeah, Did you see it? Oh, yeah, I saw it. And at the end, there's, there's a picture of me. Uh, there's a picture and everything. And probably probably when we was on stage, um, you know, it's, it's um, like I said, Miles, he, he just kept on experimenting. And then, yeah. you know, then, you know, people don't realize uh, uh, Miles Vishnu, uh, Return to Forever, Tony Williams started it with Lifetime. But all that came out of with Miles did Bitches Brew, and then all oh. them, all those groups came out of that. Yeah, yep. I mean, uh, what an innovator! Uh, and uh, can you imagine uh, the privilege it would have been to uh, play with with Miles Davis? Uh, but uh, so, and then after that, uh, you 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 kind of had that period of your life, and you, we, we went through that, and then you went on and formed Cosmic Echoes in 1973 with uh, your partner Pharaoh Saunders uh, and um, Cecil McBee on bass and uh, George Barron on the soprano and tenor saxophone. Tell us a little bit about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, what happened was Bob Field, because I've done all these records with Bob Field, because uh, Bob Field, he produced uh, most of all the John Coltrane records. He produced all the Pharaoh's records, the first ones, Karma and... Hmm. Uh, all those records we did, all the way up to Fimby. And then, um, then, uh, when I was with Gato, he produced all of Gato Barbieri's records. So then he called me one day. He said, Lonnie, you, you, it's time for you to do your own record. Yeah. And, uh, so I just did the record. I said, oh, I, said, oh, I just do the record. Then I can say, well, I've had my record. You know, I've done my own record. And, <laughs> but I was still working with Miles. So, so I did the record. I said, oh, okay, I'm going to call it after traveling, and I did the record. I had him, Tume, was playing Cougars, and, you know, and Tume was later on, you know, he became famous in his own right. And right. so, <laughs> so what happened was, I did the record, and then months later, or weeks or whatever, I get a call, well, Lonnie, you got to put a band together, because you got to go support your record. Yeah. I said, oh, no, I can't leave out. <laughs> <What? laughs> So, uh, took off, huh? I, told, I, I told Miles the story, and he's doing the same thing Gail doing. He just laughed. He said, yeah. "He said, why did you do the record?" Then I said, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> so I had to leave Miles, and and I was, you know, just, and formed the group. We did after, we did after, the first one, after traveling, then yeah. Cosmic Funk, and then we did expansions. Oh man, it just the expansions right. just took off. It did, but look, I want to play this just before expansions. We're going to play uh, the actual uh, title track of the album, Cosmic Funk, and this is c came out in the 70s, uh, and it goes like this. A great, great track off the album Cosmic Funk. Check it out. My special guest today is uh, the amazing Mr. Lonnie Lister-Smith, and we've got Gail Johnson on as well. It's nice to have you here, Gail. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 
We are talking to my uh, special guest today, uh, Lonnie Liston-Smith. Uh, great to have you here on the programme, Lonnie. And uh, we have got to tell you that uh, that's uh, featuring your brother, Donald, of course, on vocals on that one as well. Oh, yeah. Uh, what, what happened when I, when I started writing lyrics, the first thing I thought about, because uh, Donald, I have two brothers. Donald, he's the youngest one. And then I have a middle brother named Ray, and they all they all inherited my father's beautiful tenor voice. Of course, the I, I, only thing I could do was sing bass. And uh, so I, I called Donald, and uh, but you, you, you remember remember uh, remember a song, a little bit of soap, I wash away your tears. Uh huh. That was that was my that was my middle brother Ray Smith, the Jamel. They had a big hit, but but I, I you know I called Donald and said, well, Donald, I'm a, and then, then plus Donald plays flute and piano. Right. So, uh, so he played flute and he did the singing. And so when I wrote, the, I start writing lyrics. I knew his voice would just automatically fit. Yep, absolutely. And but uh, I mean, it was your voice that, that's uh, the iconic sound, you know, because of course you know, not only uh, when did you actually start doing the singing yourself? Oh, I, I think I sang on one song. I forget the name of it. Oh, this, this, but you know. I always sang bass in all the choirs in high school and in college because uh, I, I just I, I, I didn't inherit that 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 tenor voice of my father. So, uh, but but when I was in high school, I sang in bass in the, in the choir, and then when I got to college, I sang bass in the choir. So, uh, and I think on a couple of songs I tried, just we did. Uh, I forget what his name was. Dream Girl was one, and I forget the other one. But uh, but you know Donald 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 has that beautiful voice. Yes, so, you, know, you, you can't beat that. Absolutely right. Uh, so now now obviously out of that band came the the, the massive hit for you, uh, expansions. Uh, and so t- tell us about this one. We really we'd like to hear uh, you know your story about this and and how this was kind of whole song came about to launch your career. And especially you you know you really blew up uh, on in the underground scene in in the UK uh, back in sort of around about 1975 in Northwest London, uh, and that's kind of right. really where you came to prominence uh, with expansions. Tell us a little bit about that and, and the backstory from that song, and then we'll go ahead and play it. Well, it, it was amazing because we. Um Everybody on that record, uh, expansions, they were all straight ahead musicians. Uh, yeah. you know, yeah. seems like B, you, and, and a lot of people thought it was, you know, electric bass, but that was seems like B playing upright bass. Mm-hmm. And, and, and my God, I guess it was just destiny and it was just magic because we, we did expansions and, uh, and I wanted to, you know, have some very meaningful lyrics because everybody always have lyrics. Either they cry in the blues or my baby's left me. <laughs> but I wanted some, you know, I wanted some lyrics that, you know, that will, you know, enhance humanity and help mankind. So I say expand your mind. Because I've been doing a lot of studying different religions and everything. And and I'm saying, wow, we all saying the same thing. All the religions saying the same thing. So while we have all these problems and people fighting and. So I said, expand your mind. And then the next one was to have a vision of a new world where everyone will, you know, live in peace and harmony and all that. The way That's what we all want. So when expansions came out, uh, RCA Records called and said, man, you you, you, you got to get a man. You got to get this. This record is, is taking off. And they didn't know it. They had to go back and reprint all kinds of more records. And they say, you're on the charts. I'm so naive. I, I wasn't aware of Billboard charts. I mean, I know Gail's having a ball. We listen to me talk, but uh, <laughs> I am. You know, I am. I'm just so entertained. I'm I, telling you. <laughs> I know. I, you know, but I, I was. You know, I was so into the music and 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 Eddie's on Billboard charts. Man, you're on the chart. You're climbing up, yeah. and so I had to go yeah. get a manager the whole bit. Yeah. And uh, but you know, that's so. I'm just I'm just learning, learning 
the business of music. So let's go ahead and play. Let, let's go ahead and play expansions. Yeah. Of course, it starts yeah. off. It starts off with that uh, you know that iconic uh, triangle rhythm. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, that's, that, that, that's what I'm saying. It's it, it, everything. Uh, we, we weren't thinking that you know each little each little section would, would be that important, but right. you know, but it, it all came out, and, and some people grabbed onto that. Some people grabbed onto the bass line, and I was yep, used to that was the a on this. You hooked them with that on the electric piano so Yeah, it, it, it was amazing.
You've got to play the whole... You, you can't stop that that song. You've got to play the whole thing. My special guest on the program today is, is Lonnie Liston-Smith. And uh, great to have you here, Lonnie. Uh, your career has covered so many uh, different uh, kind of genres of music, you know, going, coming from straight-ahead jazz uh, to that kind of more fusion style that you came out with in the 70s. And then uh, we're gonna, we're gonna kinda, you kind of went all soulful on us uh, with that album that you, that, uh, you came out with uh, called... Uh, the, the album was called Dreams of Tomorrow. You got very soulful on us. And uh, <laughs> let's talk about that part of your life. Oh, Dreams of Tomorrow. Uh, let's see. Uh, what, song, what song were you going to play from that? Well, we were going to play... Actually, I, was, I, I thought we could do Lonely Way to Be off there. But, I mean, oh, the, it, the whole album's great. And we, we've got to play Garden of Peace, of course. Uh, so, oh, yeah. yeah. That was, oh, man, that, that's, that's a whole nother world. God, they, uh, that, that, that really... <laughs> That really shocked me uh, in a pleasant mm-hmm. way, but uh, yeah, because Marcus, Marcus is on. Uh, yeah, when I first heard him, he was eighteen or nineteen, and I, and I think we did Love Land, and then uh, he, you know, then he, then he all wrote all these songs, and then it, it just worked when I, because I used to talk, me and Miles used to talk about that, you know, because when Miles heard Tony Williams, he said Tony was what sixteen, seventeen, yeah. And you, like you can hear, you can hear hear the potential, and you, and you can almost see the future. You know, when you listen to him, you say, "Oh, okay, he he or she's gonna be a star one day." Mm. And uh, because cause you have this, you know, this, this inner magic. So uh, yeah, when I heard Marcus. So I said, "Wow, yeah, so, uh oh, here's one." And so we. Uh, you know, I took him in the studio, and then he started writing songs, and then, like you said, I, I did a Garden of Peace, and, and uh, all, all, all those songs on there, and... It's it's a great album. Let's let's play. it. Actually, let, let's go on and play Garden of Peace because we, we, we there's so much to cover and so little time to do it. Uh, my special guest uh, today is Lonnie Lister Smith, and we'll, we've also got Gail Johnson on as well. Uh, and they're all sitting by their pianos. Isn't that nice? Gail's by her piano. <laughs> Lonnie's by his. <laughs> let's listen to this. Garden of Peace from the album Dreams of Tomorrow came out in 1974. Check it out.
<laughs> Absolutely, there he is. There he is, uh, playing along. Uh, <laughs> are, you, are you playing along there, Lonnie? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was just. It, it, it's um, Mike. That, that's amazing because right now I meet all these young kids. I'm talking about fourteen on up, and they just they talk about a God of peace like it's it's, it's, it's heaven, and they say mm. it's just so peaceful. And, and, you know, and so many people, people covered that. your song, Lonnie. You know, uh, so many artists. Oh. You know, Mary J. Blige, and you know, you have a whole list oh. of all the people. Oh, you you're right, Gail. It, it, it's amazing. You know, Jay Z, all of them. They, and uh, Jay Z, yeah. And, then Keith uh-huh. and yeah. And I, I go on YouTube and I see classical pianists trying to do something with it. I'm saying, <laughs> so I mean, you know, it's amazing. Yeah, because harmonically, it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you know this, but I had the opportunity to, to write the chart for him and present it at the oh, uh, ceremony right. down in Florida. What was that, about four years ago, huh, Lonnie? You know, to have oh, your yeah, song, I, you know, I, just I chart it all out and in a frame. And, you know, the whole team put it all together for you. You know, Yahweh mm. Abraham and his whole... Uh, That's it. You yeah. Did a great job. It's beautiful. Uh, right. Like, Lonnie's uh, actually sitting by his piano now, and and uh, just to prove it, he's going to tinkle a little bit for us and uh, play a little bit over the phone. Oh, let me, I, okay, let, let, <laughs> let, let me tell you a story. Now, I was in California. I should have called here, but I, I was so busy. And I was in yeah. California in February, and I just it was a what was a group organization called Jazz is Dead, and oh. uh, almost did almost didn't want to go because you know California so far away. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but they had they had they had did uh, Gary Barnes, Gene Kahn, and and Roy Ayers. They said, "Man, you know, we got to do you because we, we we love the seventies music." I said, "Okay." So mm-hmm. they, you know, first class ticket and all that, and the money was correct. So I get to California and I, and I go into this record store, and I hear this music. I'm saying, Wow, that is a beautiful song. I said, man, what is that? And the guy looked at me and said, Lonnie, that's you. <laughs> I said, what? It was a song called Just Do. I forgot and I did it. And I had to come back home and relearn it. You know, Just Do. Wow. And, um, wait a minute. Just Do. Just Do. There it is. Thank you. 
Yeah, I'd like to do that one day with a acoustic bass and a drums. I'd like to do all those songs over like that, and uh, it should be interesting. Lonnie, that was yes. that 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 was yeah. really, that that was very special, <laughs> very very special. So thank you so much for that. It, but, that was <laughs> kind of brought a tear to my eye, man. I know. To... <laughs> so beautiful. Thank you for playing. Uh, Lonnie Lister-Smith playing for us live over the phone. And uh, thank you so much for that. He's in Richmond, Virginia right now. I wish you were here in the studio with us. It would be such such a wonderful oh, thing. Oh, yeah. That, oh, shoot. I mean, yeah. Cause, <laughs> shoot. I mean, yeah. Gail, Gail, Gail knew all the instruments. She can play the bass and everything. Yeah, she, she, she can. I uh, had a chance to play with him one time, uh, Mike, you know. Yeah, uh, just one time, yeah. But you know, the last time I oh, saw yeah. you guys were tearing it up at um, Shane Park in Detroit. Oh, that's right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> with Ronnie Laws and, and Royers. Oh, my God. We're gonna- Tom Brown. Ooh, oh yeah, we, we talked to uh, we we actually Tom Brown is listening to the show today. Want to say a big shout out to Tom Brown. Tom Brown. Tom Brown. Oh, 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 oh you, oh, Tom, oh, yeah, that's, yeah, I'm telling you. Tom's Funky, on the show today. Mr. Funky, Funky for Jamaica. That's the one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, he'll never live oh, it down. Um, <laughs> we're going to play, we're going to take you to the uh, Columbia years, uh, where you, you actually recorded with Columbia. And, of course, uh, the big, massive hit that came out for you at the time, of course, was Space Princess. Tell us about that. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Now, what happened was, you know, that that was a, that was a, the, the the disco thing. Right. So um, so what we wanted to do, because Marcus wrote, we had to talk to Marcus, and I said, well, okay. So we did. I said we need something, but we're gonna still improvise, and but but you know, and but try to keep that feeling, and and so he came up with Space Princess, and uh, and we and we used a lot of jazz chords. Yeah. You know. So, you know, that was, that, what was that? What did we do? Uh, I, mean, I love this one. We know we wanted to keep that jazz thing in there, but at the same time, you know, let, let them dance. So that's uh, right. Yeah, and it, it took off. <laughs> Disco time. <laughs>
just thrilling. Space princess, when can we meet? And is the Mike Parlett radio show Space Princess and of course uh, we are talking to uh, Lonnie Liston-Smith uh, on the program today we are so honoured to have you here Lonnie oh yeah that was that was interesting when I got to Columbia it was different they, they said uh, they said Lonnie Liston-Smith is the greatest singer of all time and I said well that's nice and they said well 
which yeah. was great because he, he he did all the horn arrangements, all the right. string arrangements. And and that and was back in, it was back in the day when when you know there were big budgets for for records and stuff coming out. You had a, right. a whole you know, orchestra on there. I mean, huge band. I mean, and and the the iconic voice. Tell us about the voice, uh, you know, of Lonnie Lister Smith and and the sound that that so we have on the singing on there. It was just like it's so unique, such a. a, a oh, you, oh, you mean uh, oh, you mean that was Donald. Donald, that's right. Now, now I've got to tell you, a lot of people think it is, it, and I, I must say, when I was uh, growing up listening to you um, all those years ago, that I actually thought it was you singing. And a lot of people think, oh my that it, a lot of people think that it, Lonnie Liston Smith, all the, the, you know, the voice that's become synonymous with your sound is you. But actually, oh. it's it's Donald. A lot of people yeah. get, make that mistake. He sounds like him. Yeah. He's oh, yeah, oh, no, that's 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 Donald. Uh, you know, you know, all those, you know, same family. But and that was my younger brother Donald. And uh, oh man, if I had that kind of voice, who knows? I I, I probably got in all kinds of trouble. But uh, <laughs> you know, no, that's that's that, that's Donald. Uh, like I say, he's that beautiful tenor voice, like my father, and uh, and then you know, like. With Bert Dickerton, he had to hide those background singers. I think Patty Austin was one of them, and yeah. uh, the other—I forget the other one. The other uh, one of them was uh, we're famous. Uh, her and her husband wrote a lot of songs for Motown. Uh, so oh, I mean, you talking about Ashford and Simpson, Valerie? That's it. That's it. Yeah. It was because uh, mm-hmm. people don't realize they used to—they used to all do background. Oh yeah. They, they come yeah. in. They, they come in the studio, and they were so good. They would. Shoes. They do it in one take. That's how talented they were. Wow. So they were, uh, and so you know they just all came in and did it. And but Bert did a lot of good arrangements yeah. on, on those records. Yep. I want to play this song. This is this is one of the songs that I just wore this out. I had the vinyl uh, back in when this came out, uh, and I absolutely wore it out. One of my favorite Lonnie Liston Smith songs is "Quiet Moments." Check it out. Oh shoot! That's that's oh, that's it. Ooh, what year was that? Yeah, you're right.
Come on, play it, Lonnie. Play it. Play it. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's me noodling around. He knew, he's playing along. Yeah. That's me. That's me jamming on your tune, Lonnie. <laughs> <laughs> Is that you? Uh, are you jamming as well, Gail? I said, yeah, I'm jamming with Lonnie too. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's Gail jamming right Ooh, there. Great changes, great changes, eh? <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Woo. That's so cool. Uh, Lonnie Lister Smith uh, is on my show today. We're very, very proud to have you here, Lonnie. And thank you so much for playing as live. Is what he's playing live uh, as well for us yeah. on his show yeah, yeah. as is Gail. That's a lot of fun. Uh, oh, he can still play. I'm telling you, his show is out of sight. When he leaned back into the into the cut, he has a little groove he gets into. I said, "Okay, I'm done. I'm done." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he had his keyboard stacked, and he just leaned back and said, yeah. the further he leaned back, the more he was getting into it. The crowd went bananas. I yep. was like, "Yeah, go ahead, Lonnie." <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And now. Oh, okay. <laughs> We got to say, Lonnie's been around. Lonnie's been around a long time. I mean, you, you guys have been—you yes. know—you've been going since uh, since the '60s, obviously, and uh, still, you know, still very prolific today. Lonnie, what do you think about? You know, what would your comments be about kind of music, the way it's the direction it's going in today? And I know you've got a few things to say about that, uh, and, and you know, and you teach well, and everything. So, tell us about what your thoughts are. Well, I, I just want you know the, the artists to, to to find their own voice. And because a lot of times, a lot, a lot of the artists, you, you know, okay, you know, when you, when you hear Miles, you say, okay, that's Miles. When you hear Train, so that's Train. And I remember when I had opportunity to, to talk to Monk, and he was saying, you know, you you got to find your own voice, and so people can, uh, when you hear someone, you say, oh, okay, that's or oh, that's that's Herbie, that's Lonnie, or, or that's yeah. Wayne Shorter, or that's or Freddie Hubbard. Or, we don't mean to. So, so yeah. you know, make sure you find your own voice, and um, mm -hmm. and and remember, notes are not music; it's, it's what you do with those notes. Um, yeah. So that's that that, that that's important. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it's um, you know, you you gotta you gotta be able to because we all we, we all know the notes. We got these scales. <laughs> well, but what are you going But you you gotta what are you gonna do with them though? You know, you gotta mm. go inside and. And, and see what you're gonna do. So, yeah. And that's, it's, e it's easier said than done, but you got you got to go inside and find you. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yes, uh, that's always the challenge for all of us musicians, uh, trying to find new things to do. Uh, and there's always so much to do, but it's just like choices. It's all about choices. <laughs> Yeah, Lonnie Lister Smith, uh, my guest, special guest today. Uh, we, oh, and we're in the background at the moment. We're just we're playing uh, another version of Expansions that uh, not many people hear, uh, and it's on an album called The Blue Note Sessions, uh, and it's got Nigel Kennedy, you know, violinist Nigel Kennedy's on it as well, uh, and uh, it's kind of more of an unplugged kind of version of, of Expansions. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the album's called uh, Expansions. Uh, the, sorry, the album's called The Blue Note Sessions uh, with um, Nigel Kennedy as well. That's a very, very cool version of this. So check that one out. We won. No kidding. Yeah. I have heard that. Oh. Yeah, here it is. But I met Nigel. Nigel is, is the uh, classical violinist, right? That is the correct. The violin. Yeah. yeah. Wow, because I met him in London. But I didn't know he had, he had recorded Expansions. Wow. Well, he's he's on the album. Uh, there's you know as as, as a, not one of the featured artists. It's a compilation album, uh, and okay. uh, yeah, so that's very very cool. Uh, and and I have to say, uh, Lon is on a lot of different compilation albums, uh, and we're going to see if we can we're going to dip into some of your more recent work as well. But I want to play uh, be before I do this play this this next track. I have to tell you that on Space Princess, uh, that was a, a, a written by Marcus Miller, a young Marcus Miller, and he was only sixteen when he recorded that song with you. Yeah, but well, I always said maybe 16, 17, 18 in that area. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, you know, that's what I said when I heard him. Because I remember uh, when before Miles hired him, uh, you know, Miles called and asked me about Marcus because, you know, I've been using Marcus. 
And I got all excited. And I said, oh, man, uh, Miles, you, you found your twin. <laughs> and, but, and, and Miles look at and Miles say, oh, there you go with that cosmic stuff. But, but yeah. then he called, you know, he hung the phone up. Then he called back, you know, uh, you know, with Miles. So I, I said, Miles, you Gemini and Marcus is Gemini. So you found your twin and look what happened. He wrote that big hit, Tutu. Yeah. For, uh, for Miles and, and that, that, took, that, that took off that was it mm-hmm. uh, right, so we're, next one we're going to play is uh, Give Peace a Chance this is another massive hit for you Lonnie tell us about how this one came about and, and give us some inside scoop on this one well th- that's what I meant uh, Mike um, okay we did expansions and I think Give Peace a Chance is on Vision of a New World and you know I mean, I mean man I was serious I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to save humanity, you know, but I found out hard. A lot of people don't want to be saved, but anyway, yeah, I got to do it. Hello. So we, we did expansions, and uh, yeah, I said, okay, expand your mind. And then we get to the second one. I said, now we're going to expand your mind so we can have a vision of a new world where, we, where it's going to be just peace, love, and harmony, and we're going to cut out all the wars and, and everything, and... Uh, so that, that's what I meant. I said, we know, let's, let's, let's give people a chance. And we sure need this song today. Uh, this is a, this. I mean, there's never been a time where we where we need this song right now with all the division that's going oh on. Oh my world. goodness! Mike, it's perfect. You like the same it. thing, Mike. Absolutely. We sure need it today. Check it out. You like it. <laughs>
I want to say a big shout out to uh, quite a few people listening to this program today. So many people tuned in listening to you, Lonnie. I want to say hi to Steve Carr. Barbara Wamala is tuned in today. Uh, oh, Anthony Carter is also tuned in. Uh, Juan Gary. Uh, Hope Diamond is tuned in as well. Hey, Hope. I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Of course, uh, Tom Brown is uh, listening to us as well. Uh, Guy Hertzbitz in France. I want to say hi to Machi Fukushima listening in Japan and all our Japanese listeners. How are you doing today? Ohio. Uh, good morning. And also I want to say hi to Margaret Lyons and Joyce Richards and Carl Young. And Gail Johnson is tuned tuned into the program as well aren't you girl? <laughs> she is uh, there you go uh i want to uh, lonnie thank you so much for that and uh what what, what a great uh, iconic song that that was um and, and i've got to tell you that uh um, lonnie did record some music uh probably about in the 90s you kind of dipped into the, the more smooth jazz realm tell us about that with the album transform transformation yeah, um, that, that's another interesting story. Uh, okay, so what happened was, um, you know how I said, okay, let me let me let me let me become an entrepreneur, and I think I started a record label called uh, Loveland Records. Right, that's right. And uh, that, but that's interesting because I don't care it's. The music industry is, is, is very tricky. And so I had a distribution deal with uh, Ichiban. And the guy that owned well, Ichiban, yeah. he used to own, Ichiban, yeah. Yeah, he, he used to own that, uh, uh, that uh, magazine, Blues and Soul, I think, way yep. back in the day in London. Right. And John Abbey. Uh-huh. And... But at the time, so okay, he was doing my distribution, but at the time, uh, he was having financial difficulties. And the record company, well, I didn't know, was getting ready to go into bankruptcy. So when you get caught in the middle of that, that that's a whole other story. But Transformation, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, was, it was a beautiful album. So that was, I was trying to tell people, uh, you know, the Liberty Ferry, if you cut down all the trees, you will have no air to breathe and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So, um, but it, it, it's a beautiful album, though. So maybe one day we'll be able to, to, to redo it. It'd be nice to hear that. And and you know, I want to come back and talk to you about 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 some of your spirituality as well, Lonnie, because you you know you you got to quite some some interesting things to say about that which we'd like to hear about too but let's uh talk let's play this track this is queen of hearts from the album transformation and oh this is- hey hey mike yes i'm glad you chose that one because i wrote the queen of hearts that was for uh we were in the studio when princess died you know and since oh. she passed away and i wrote queen of hearts because they used to call that queen of hearts that's and right And i wrote that for her you know tribute to her and I was going to put on that dedicated to Princess Di, but the musician said, no, don't do that because people think you're just trying to capitalize. But uh-huh. I wish I had just went on and did it. But Queen of Hearts, you know, yeah. for her. I think that would have been yeah. nice. Uh, so this is a tribute uh, to Princess Di. Uh, and this is Queen of Hearts on the album Transformation, beautiful side of Lonnie Lister-Smith. Smooth jazz kind of vibe. And uh, let's have a listen, sit back and enjoy this.
You're listening to the Mike Parlett radio show. My special guest today is Lonnie Liston Smith. Now, if you happen not to uh, be able to stay on the, the whole show uh, or you miss it and you want to tell your friends, uh, you can uh, just check out our YouTube page. We are broadcasting live on YouTube at the moment. Go to Mike Parlett radio show on YouTube and you can see uh, the lovely Gail Johnson. That's the only reason we got you here, Gail, because cause you look so great. People want to go. People want to log on and see Gail. Isn't that right, Gail? Yes, she she's there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, no, no, she's she's a fantastic musician as well. And uh, I've got to tell you uh, that um, let's put you on. That Gail has just you just won an award with Jazz and Pink. Tell us about that. Um, well, we uh, actually we've been winning awards like every year, and from the city of Carson, state of uh, California, the state senate. And the, the last one I posted was in 2019, so it wasn't for this year, but it was last year. So, uh, you know, um, Jazz and Pink has been doing wonderful things, um, you know, around the community for various enterprises, uh, like um, helping uh, women in need and uh, children and after-school programs and uh, team sports and things like that. So, um, now th- this one is for our breast cancer, so... We're very happy to uh, always do what we can to to give back. Fantastic. Uh, And if you don't know uh, who Jazz and Pink are, uh, they they are one of the uh, very few all-girl jazz groups in the world uh, and run and hosted by Gail Johnson and a lot of your compositions. Tell us about some of the the legendary uh, musicians that are in there playing on the luminaries you've got uh, playing with Jazz and Pink. Mentioned a few of those. Oh, uh, we've had so many women over the years. Uh, we've had over 50 women over the years. And, uh, you know, we started out with Althea Renee Flautis. Uh, Althea Renee down in San Antonio, she's doing her thing. We're so proud of her and what she's been doing. Uh, our fiddler goddess, she just uh, moved on to North Carolina, and she's doing some great things, some orchestral things nowadays. Uh, that's uh, Karen Briggs. So uh, yeah. she's been playing with us over the years. Look out for some new music from Robin Bramley. Our, our bassist, our music director, she's going to branch on off and, and continue on with that. So we're going to be looking for a new bass player. And uh, I'll be holding auditions yeah. soon. New bass but player for Jazz and Pink. Uh, if, if you're, you've got to be, <laughs> yeah, got, obviously, you've got to be a lady. Yeah, so we're, yeah, we're <laughs> just growing and expanding. You know, so, we're always getting yeah. uh, new people, young people. And, uh, you know, we're just very diverse. Of course, uh, Tomoka, you know, she's still doing very well with us on flute and sax. And uh, so we're happy about that. We got newcomer uh, J- uh, Josie Aiello on vocals. Oh, my God. She, in fact, she used to work with Patty Austin. And Patty Austin did one of her uh, compositions. So, um, yeah, with Quincy Jones, she was uh, doing a lot of great stuff. And, uh, yeah, Kira, we have her on percussion, and she's been working in the mm. past with, like, Aaron Neville and Babyface. And yep. so we're lucky to have her on vocals and percussion. So we keep it moving, try Doing to keep it good. fresh. Doing very good. And, uh, and uh, mention... Give all my fans something, that, you know. Yeah, you got to me- mention the, uh, the latest album that's out right now. Uh, there's, uh, the course. latest album now is called Joy. I am so happy. It is uh, Jazz and Pink featuring Gail Johnson. So yeah. it's a series of my compositions that um, I had, uh, you know, I don't know where all that is. I guess being stuck in the house with the COVID thing, but, you know, I just lost my mom, so I'm sure she's been my inspiration and, you know, tugging me to go head on, and so I was very glad to get all that music out, and uh, we got some uh, guest artists on there. Yep, you uh, do Waters that, Waters and Marion Meadows, yeah. and of course, the great Paul Jackson Jr., and, uh, you know, and, and Kim Scott, Kim Scott out of Birmingham. Yeah, this is Keystroke. <laughs> yeah, we got Mr. Sekou Bunch on the bass on that one, and uh, of course, Paul Jackson Jr. And, uh, Play, play, gal, play it for us. Come on, <laughs> come on, play along. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. Now she is playing. You are playing, aren't you? Uh, you, you? You can put the camera down so people can actually see. See you are. You are. You are you're not. You're not just mime. You actually. Oh, you are actually oh, no, playing I can't it. Can't move it, huh? Yeah, yeah. There oh, you go. can't Look, see me playing. There you can. See. <laughs> Okay. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. That's and we, technology. Yeah, stuff. and we got and we got Lonnie Liston Smith uh, over yeah. the other side of the country as well, and he's pl- he, he's been playing live as well. <laughs> Are you still with us, Lonnie? Yeah, Lonnie. <laughs> yeah. He, he is. There you go. What do you think of that? She's funky, isn't she? Funky, funky, funky. <laughs> <laughs> Lonely Lisa Smith, uh, my special guest on the program today. Uh, also, if you'd like to download a copy of our podcast, uh, you can go to Mixcloud. We upload the show each week to Mixcloud where you can get uh, the podcast and subscribe to us uh, and uh, you get a copy of the show so you can play it any time you'd like to listen to the one. And I'm sure that you'll be playing this one a lot because we don't often get guests like Lonnie Lisa Smith on the program uh, and we're, we're very happy to have you here today, Lonnie. It's been such a wonderful experience having you on the program and we've only got like 15 minutes left before we hand over to Johnny Britt who's following me if we're listening live today Johnny Britt comes on after us as well for his own radio show The Turntable uh, and that uh, is another two hours of great music after that uh, and he, we've been having competitions about uh, you know what iconic guests we can get on the program and uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Johnny Britt had Will today. yeah he's got one today he had Will Downing last week uh, and uh, he's got uh, who's I think he told me who he's got on there today I'm going to try and find out I'll let you know who that is but if you keep listening you're going to find out but I tell you it's another great uh, special guest on Johnny Britt's show uh, after this we're going to go back to Lonnie as well and I want to play we have to play this song uh, and, and of course it's Sunburst another Marcus Miller composition tell us about this one how this one came about Lonnie okay which one was that? Uh, Sunburst oh, oh yes Sunburst Oh yeah, that was oh she well I, I think that was that was the first time Marcus recorded. I think it's on Loveland. I think yes, yes, it is. On, uh, it is indeed on Loveland. Yes, that was that was that was when Marcus first you know because he oh when I first met him we, we, they were jamming all these young kids jamming and you know Marcus was a little you know he's young had his head on turned around you know how they do and then he, <laughs> and so he was he was playing the bass and I said. uh Wow, he sounded good. So then, after they finished jamming, he he said, "I got a song for you." I said, "I said okay." So I'm looking at this little young guy. I said, "Okay, well, what, what song is?" This? So he put the bass down, and sat down at the piano. <laughs> and that was Journey into Love. I said, "Uh oh." So I said, oh, "Okay, let's go no. to the studio." <laughs> And uh, yeah. that was it. Then then he did Sunburst. And then that was that's, that's a nice nice tune. It got a little funk in it, so it's nice. Let's check it out. Here we go. Lonnie Lisa Smith, my special guest. Come on, play, Lonnie.
Gail's playing. Are you playing along, Gail? Yeah, yeah. I had to <laughs> jump into that, man. That groove is so cold. Is that, is that cool? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, man. I didn't know that one. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. Uh, Lonnie Lister-Smith, wow. my special guest on the program today. Uh, don't forget, if you'd like to watch the show, you can watch it on YouTube. Go to YouTube and then type in Mike Parlett Radio Show, uh, and it should all be there. Uh, alternatively, if you'd like to download our podcast, please go to mixcloud.com and type in Mike Parlett Radio Show, and you can get a free recording of our radio show which we do broadcast live here from the studio here at talented productions here in los angeles each week it's 10 till midnight if you're listening live in the uk and it's two till four on the west coast of the united states where we're coming to you live from los angeles california and uh, gail is over in van nuys van nuys van nuys <laughs> yes i'm in the san fernando valley absolutely yes indeed very cool uh and uh, lonnie lister smith on the program today thank you so much for joining us lonnie uh we have uh, about another five minutes of the show to, to go uh, but before i do want to pull up this version of blue bossa that you did tell us about this this is looking a little bit more straight ahead jazz oh yeah that was that was pretty because i always liked uh you know you know joe henderson and I heard Joe Henderson and Kenny Dorham, they did Blue Bossa, and um, so, you know, we, um, so, I just enjoyed it doing it, but that's all I like to do with Straight Ahead. Yeah, of course. Check it out. Blue Bossa, Lonnie Liston Smith. We go. Uh, that's uh, we. Uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time, Lonnie. Uh, but uh, we would. Uh, we've got to do a Lonnie Liston Smith part two at some point because uh, there's. There, we've only just scratched the surface of, of all of all your work over the decades that you've been uh, bringing us all this great music. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely oh, beautiful. Music. We'll play it by ear. All right. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on the program today. Uh, everybody, uh, listeners, thank you so much for joining us. Lonnie Liston Smith my, has been my special guest on the program today. If you'd like to listen to this show again, please uh, go to my YouTube page, type in Mike Parlett Radio Show, and subscribe to the YouTube 
feed that we send out each and every week live. And uh, thanks to Gail Johnson for coming on today, Gail. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you for having me. And so happy to be here with you, Lonnie. This is wonderful, all beautiful right, baby, music. Right. Continue blessing, okay. my brother. Yes, and uh, keep on. Sp- right. uh, and Lonnie, you know, one thing I have to say about Lonnie is is he's all about spreading peace and love, uh, and and good good wishes and great uh, feelings around with his music. Thank you. Keep doing that, Lonnie. And uh, we hope that right, uh, one day uh, I hope to be able to play with you. I'm a saxophone player myself. Uh, I just do this for fun uh, on here on Solar Radio. Uh, but uh, my main thing is playing saxophone, and it will be a cr- such a great honour to maybe one day share a stage with you or just jam with you at some point. It'll be really Really wonderful. Well, you, what what, what instrument you play? I play the saxophone. <laughs> well, I'll be done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he plays really good all saxophone right. and flute and clarinet and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. All right. I'll check out YouTube. All right. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lonnie. Lonnie, Mr. Smith, on my program today. Uh, we just uh, about to hand you over to Johnny Britt with the turntable. Thank you for joining us, listeners. And uh, we'll be back again next week, no doubt, with another special guest. And a big thanks to Gail Johnson for joining us today. Thank you, Gail. Yes. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, Johnny, have a good show. Lonnie, have a good rest of the week, you guys. I'll see you soon. Take care. All the best. All right. Y'all take care. All right. Bye. Online and on DAB Digital Radio. This is is Solar Radio, your classic and 21st century soul soul station. Yeah, welcome everybody, and welcome to the show. Yeah, it's another week on Solar Radio. Thank you so much for tuning in to the turntable this weekend. We're going to have a great time starting off 